What's up everybody? It's Johnny Candido of Candido Training. H. Q. And I know this will probably be a controversial video, but it's on why I don't use the RPE scale for my programming. And for those who aren't familiar with RPE based programs, what it essentially does is it auto regulates the loading you use for your sets and it says you want it at a certain difficulty and then you go off of how difficult you perceive that set to be rather than having a set percentage or a set progression that was already determined before that workout began. Now first of all I want to say that I have nothing against RPE based programs and I actually think it's a great thing that it's now become popular because the more options lifters have the better. Try out everything that you're curious about and then just see how you enjoy it. If you like it and you progress well with it, then by all means do it. Don't stick to a specific dogma just because your favorite lifter does it. I want to make that very clear. So to get straight to the point here, my number one reason for why I don't use the RP scale is due to psychological factors. And this is both for before the workout, during my actual sets, and afterwards moving forward from a workout. Now what I mean by this is when I have a specific goal set beforehand, before the workout even began, I can visualize it and it forces me to take care of all the little details leading up to it. If I know I'm going to squat let's say 495 for 1 to 4 reps and I know that's a very difficult weight for me, I'm going to make sure I get my proper sleep, I'm going to make sure my diet's on point, my body weight is where it needs to be because I know I have to give it my all. And I'm also visualizing having five plates on each side. I know exactly how it look in my squat rack. I'm maybe even watching videos of other lifters squatting the same weight for reps. And by the time I actually get to doing the workout, I've already done that exact set over and over again in my head. So now it feels easy. Now I feel pumped for it and completely ready. And then when it comes to the actual workout, a lot of times you'll warm up and you'll just feel bad. Just something will feel off. You'll feel weak, but then the workout actually ends up being very good and you end up performing well. And this happens very often. You can ask experienced lifters about this and almost every single one of them will tell you a story about this happening. Where, and then this is why if I had RPE set up, my RPE scale, in my head I'd be thinking, okay, I'm going to dial it down because it's clearly just not in the cards today. And then my psychology during the set is very clear. All I'm thinking about is maybe one or two technique cues, if any, and I just want to be completely in the zone. I don't want to analyze anything. I don't want to think how fast was this rep or that rep. I just want to think I'm getting this weight up. I'm getting it for at least this amount of reps and there's nothing that's going to stop me. Now I'm not saying that you can't train with a great deal of intensity while using the RPE scale because you clearly can't. My point is that just I prefer to train with a clear mind and I want to leave the analyzing aspect for after the workout, not during the actual set itself. Now a lot of the aspects I've talked about leading up to the actual set and during it are basically forcing yourself to hit a minimum number. You want to be able to at least perform up to a standard that you just expect out of yourself. However, I actually think that there can also be a drawback with RPE if you exceed your expectations. Because of course it's not just about auto-regulating when you feel bad, but it's also about when you feel good to go for a big PR that you would have missed out if you just used percentage based programming. However, there are also two notable drawbacks to this part as well. The first one being that if you do hit a huge PR on a day where you just feel good, that a lot of times a massive PR can actually ruin the rest of your training cycle if it just randomly happened in the middle of it. You're always comparing yourself to your best performance. However, on a percentage based program, you don't take advantage of that day where you feel good but it also lets you stay motivated because you haven't ever tested what your maximum ability is. So there's always that mystery and you're always building and building for a planned testing period. And that connects with the second reason why I think a huge random PR can be a drawback is that if you are a power lifter, you want to be able to practice programming, being able to be at your strongest on a specific date. Also, I want to say that a lot of people connect the two concepts of autoregulation and the RPE scale as if they have to be intertwined, when the reality is you can autoregulate very easily on a percentage-based program. And I'm actually going to have a video out later this week detailing how I do it. Alright, that's it guys. Before I go, I want to announce that there's a big sale on Candido Training Apparel. Candido Training Apparel. Apparel. And you can buy that right now and it's going to last 24 more hours 
since when this video is uploaded. But anyways, we just want to make sure you guys got a really good deal for Christmas. And then afterwards, of course, we'll restock at the standard prices. And then we'll also make moves in terms of expanding the apparel as well. Anyways, make sure to like the video, support the channel, subscribe if you haven't already, and thanks for watching, guys. Peace! I eat pears now and shit like that. Shout out to all the pear.